Thank you, everybody. And thanks for taking the time to um, attend this session, which hopefully will be of uh, value to all of you. And as the name says that, moving from 11.0 to 11.1, there have been changes. And uh, that is what I intend to highlight during this. Before that, I would like to pass on the mantle back to uh, Jimmy to uh, give you an introduction to Exit Certified as a training organization. So Jimmy, would you like to take over for this slide, please? Uh, sure, I uh, just wanted to present to you that Exit Certified uh, can cover all of your IT training needs, uh, that we are an IBM Global Training uh, Provider Excellence, and we just received that this year for 2019. Um, the platform that you're currently using is very similar to our MVP uh, platform that we'll teach all of our remote classes through. Uh, so if this is something that uh, is acceptable to you, we please feel free to sign up in the future for more courses with us. Um, Vinay? Okay, thank you, thank you, Jimmy. So um, everybody, I know uh, there are uh, quite a few people attending this webinar and some of you might have already had trainings with us. And uh, as the versions kept coming, IBM uh, released uh, courses on various versions. And those courses did not address all the versions, but there were changes which were done during uh, the version release. And previously, till version 10, IBM used to uh, give a new release maybe once every year, year and a half, based on when enough changes were there, they wanted to upgrade the product, then they will release a new version. But from version 11, they shifted to quarterly releases. And the quarterly releases were basically based on the feedback of the people, the quarterly release will input that. But from 10.2.2, which was the latest version before 11, to 11, basically what Cognos did was, what IBM did was, they, change the user interface. Not so much the working of the software, but the user interface was changed. And as the point releases kept coming every three months, some customers are in 11.0, some are at four, some are at seven. So I would just like to have a spectrum of the people attending what version you are on. So I'm just going to uh, open a poll for everybody to just let me know what kind, what version are currently on. So just if you can just, I'll keep this poll on for about 30 seconds, if you can just poll it. Okay, I see that approximately 67% of the people have already voted. So here are the results. So we see that about 16% are on other version, which, which would I would say it is even before 10. It could be possible. Some people are still using version eight. Uh, of course, the recommendation would be to come to the later version, but there are always their own reasons why they are there but about 10% are on 11.1 and rest everybody's on various versions of 11.0. So this, I, I feel that this webinar would be of value to majority of you. And 11.0.0 is polling at 20%. So that I would say 11.0.0 is a release from where you do want to upgrade. The reason for that is I would explain that in a minute. Now, before that, I would also like to have a little bit more insight into what would be considered as an improvement definitely is required. 
So do you find the floating toolbars distracting in analytics 11.0? Well, that is almost even. Half of you say it is uh, distracting, half of you say it is not distracting. And the reason why I put this question out is, this is one of the things which during the classes, I did get a feel that people said, well, how do we control these toolbars? That fortunately has been fixed in version 11. Now, uh, just one more question I would like to put to you before I move ahead with the webinar. So that is also one thing which I don't know whether uh, most of you noticed or you did not notice is the properties, once IBM rearranged the room, the properties were moved at different places. So to find those properties, do you find it difficult to find previously commonly used properties were moved to a place where it was difficult to find them. Well, that is also almost even, but a majority of you, 58%, find that it was difficult to find the properties. Wow, okay. So let me give you a background of what has happened from 10.2.2 to 11.0 to 11. 10.2.2 was a version which was coming from version one to version eight, and as IBM was releasing, they were sticking to a user interface, which did not change much. But after 10.2.2, when IBM moved to 11.0, they decided to completely rearrange the room. That's what I say, user interface. So that is what it essentially was. Of course, there were some new capabilities coming in, but mostly it was the user interface redesign. When 11.0 was released, on which the trainings was also released, IBM did clean up the user interface. And when it cleaned up the user interface, it moved things to different places. And it was a quantum jump for the people from 10.2.2 to 11. And those of you who are still on 10.2.2 or before, be prepared that coming to version 11, whether you go to 11.0 or you go to 11.1, would be a place where the room has been completely rearranged. And when the rearranging was done, there were interface changes. So the sidebar changed. So 10.2.2 to 11 was a big change, but from 11.0 to 11.1 also, there have been changes. And that is what the main reason of this webinar is. But fortunately in version 11.1, what IBM has done, they have almost brought back the grouping of the properties and the grouping of the feel, look and feel of the user interface, which was in 10.2.2, of course, with the new uh, arrangement of the user interface. So sidebar changes in version 11.0, what we had was in the sidebar, we had different icons for the package, the source, toolbox, pages, and queries. Now that was taken from 10.2.2. In 10.2.2 also, we used to have a bar in the middle where we had a toolbox, we had the page explorer, we had the query explorer. 
tool bus, of course, was at a different place. So the sidebar had all those icons in version 11.0. Over the course of changing from 11.0.0 to 11.0.13, which is the latest uh, release for 11.0, IBM did change some icons. In 11.0.0, there used to be only one icon for navigate, but in 11.0.7, that changed. So in 11.0.13 or 11.0.x, that is how the sidebar was. But in 11.1, .1, there are no icons, separate icons for package, toolbox, pages, and queries. Everything has come in insertable objects. And that dynamically changes based on what you're trying to do. If you are in the queries pane, you would see the insertable object for queries. If you are in the variables pane, you will see the insertable objects for variables. And if you are working with a report, in the insertable object, you will see the package and the toolbox. So that dynamically changes based on context where you are, the insertable object will show you what is available. So that is a good thing. It will automatically change for you. In 11.0, you were still required to click on some extra clicks to get to where you wanted to. So the other interface changes, one bigger one is the navigation menu, which is new in version 11. So this icon in the sidebar, which we had pages, queries, etc., has been moved into one navigation menu. So that navigation menu is always available, and then you can navigate to the pages from here, go to prompt pages, queries, classes, variables. So everything has been made into this one navigation menu, which is new in 11.1. .1. It was non-existent in 11.0. So toolbar pinning and unpinning, for which I did put a poll also out, that is now available in version 11.1. 11.0, what used to happen was you click on an object, a toolbar, toolbar would appear, but that toolbar would appear on a place of its own choosing. You could not control the size, you could not control the place where it is, and sometimes it was even difficult to find out where it is. It might hang right at the bottom of the page. If you select a large object, toolbar might go at the bottom, sometimes it might go at the top, and not only that, based on your monitor resolution, the toolbar for the same object might appear at different places to find the place where it is op optimum to show, per se, as for the software, and that, to my mind, did become distracting or annoying for some people, say, where, where does the toolbar go? And you're looking for the toolbar. And that is what my point says, it led to a common complaint. Of course, it's very good to know that about half of you feel that that's okay, wherever it is, I'll find it. But it was a common complaint, which has been resolved in version 11. In 11, whenever you work, the toolbar is by default pinned on the top of the page. Now that again, as I said, emulates what was there in version 10.2.2. Now in 10.2.2, the toolbar used to be always there at the top and no matter where you are, the toolbars always were the same. The only difference was the icons were enabled or disabled based on what was available. So that also was a little bit confusing to some people sometimes. They say, why can't I click on that icon? It is not available. But what IBM has done in this is the toolbar is pinned like 10.2.2, but only the icons which are available or applicable would show in the toolbar. So toolbar size would keep changing. And icons will be appearing or disappearing from the toolbar based on the object which is selected. But there is one icon which is new to the leftmost icon is for the pinning. By default it is pinned, but if you click on that, the toolbar will get unpinned. And if you unpin, it would start floating like 11.0. But one more thing you will notice, if you unpin the toolbar, then some of the icons from the toolbar, for example, cut, copy, and delete, they would be moved to the more icon. They would no longer be in the floating toolbar. And that also sometimes can lead to confusion. So be aware that if the toolbar is pinned, it would always be at the top of the page. The icons could be different. If it is unpinned, then some of the icons might be found in the more button. And more button is always the last. And one more thing in 11, you might, 11.1, you might find is when the toolbar goes expanded and contracted based on the icons, it might sometimes go behind the 
properties window. So you might need to close the properties window to see the toolbar. And I'm rather sure that as the new versions keep coming after 11.1, the point releases that also might be resolved by IBM. So it is just 11.1.1, the very first one, I say that the toolbar does go behind the properties window sometime and you need to close that. Application bar redesign. So that also has been changed. So in the application bar, which is the blue bar on the top, there have been some changes. So there used to be a page views icon, which was new for version 11.0. And in 11.0, that icon like an eye was there to say page views. Now that has been moved into a menu in 11.1, where you see page design, it's a drop down menu where you can change the, and the reason why that was done is in the 11.0, if you click on the page views icon and you change the page view, you would never have any indication on the page what page view you are working in. Are you in page design mode? Are you in page uh, preview mode? Or if you are in page structure mode? So you would not know what mode you are working in. But in 11.1, .1, once you select a mode, that would keep showing at the top of your page so you know that the, what mode you are working in. And also, in the more button, there were some properties which were available. The three dots is renamed the more button. It's there at various places in version 11.0 and 11.1. .1. So that more icon had some properties which have now moved to a new icon called the settings icon. So I will introduce that to you a couple of slides down. And one more thing which has been changed. In the more button in 11.0, there was an option for locking, unlocking. And if you unlock your report, there was no indication on the page that you're, you're now working in the unlock mode, which was visible in version 10.2. So in 11.0, there is a lock, new lock icon which has been added. So if you unlock your report, you will keep seeing if you're working in the lock mode or unlock mode. Navigational differences. Now, the differences are when you are in 11.0, as I said, the navigation was a little more, you can say, I won't use the word clumsy, but it was a little more involved. So when you were navigating, so for example, if you go to the queries option, you go to the query explorer and you are on a particular query. To add objects, you had to again, click on the tool box icon to see what object can be added. That in 11.1, one is automatically selected. The moment you go to queries from the navigation menu, only toolbox is available and you see what objects are able to be added. Now that again emulates what was in 10.2.2. So what IBM has done is properties wise, they have gone back to the way things were in 10.2.2 because people were used to that. And that was right that, like that in version eight also, the previous versions. So in 11.1, .1, they have gone to a place where people with prior knowledge will become comfortable again. In 11.0, the Apple card was disturbed and now it is again being set so that people can draw from their previous experiences. Similarly, when you are going to variables pane in 11.0, once you go to variables, you again need to click on the toolbox icon to see what objects can be added. In 11.1, .1, the moment you go to variables, automatically toolbox is selected and the objects which are available to be added are automatically selected for you. Now, rearrangement of properties. In 11.1.1, some properties have been rearranged. And again, as I said, from 10.2.2, the, the properties which were scattered at different places, and that's one of the poll questions I had also. Do you find it difficult to find the properties? Half of you said yes, some of you said no but properties were arranged and placed at different places. For example, a tabular data option. In 11.0, you right click the query, you got the tab tabular data option there. Whereas in 10.2.2, you had a menu uh, drop down where you could say view tabular data. In 11.1, .1, now they have added a toolbar for the queries also where view tabular of data is available. And expand references, in 11.0, you right click the query, you see expand references if you are doing any joins or unions in the queries to see what 
queries joined to frame the final query, what queries are union to make the final query, that expand references was available in the right click menu. But 11.1.1, now it is available from the queries menu, which is just like the page views, there is a queries menu also. So here is the rearrangement of properties. In 11.0, you right click the query, you will see various options like view tabular data is here and expand references, looking at all queries, projected queries. So that is available in the right click menu for the queries. Now in 11.1, .1, you have got a menu on the right side. You're seeing all queries, projected queries, data sources, expand references, and those have been moved from the right click menu of the query. View tabular data is available in the right click menu also like 11.0, but there is an icon also available in the toolbar, which is for the queries. So with 11.1, .1, IBM is trying to become more intuitive so that users or the authors don't have to struggle to find where do I go to find that. So they are trying to go back to arrangement of 10.2.2. So people working with 10.2.2 are able to relate to 11.1 .1 and also making it more intuitive visually in 11.1. .1. That is the new icon, which has been added in 11.1. .1. I mean, there's no name given to it, but it could be called settings, it could be called manage. So that is an icon which is added and most of the properties like opening report from clipboard. Now in 11.0, that was available in right click menu for the report. So if you right click the report, then you see open report from clipboard, copy report from clipboard. So that was placed at a different place. And also on the more button, you see options, locked menu, conditional styles, clearing parameters. So that was all in the more menu. So these two have been combined and added at one place with the settings menu. So options has gone there and uh, validate report, validate options, open report from clipboards, so all that have been rearranged. The properties are there, but they've been placed at one place instead of multiple places. New capabilities have also been added to 11.1. Convert list to repeated table. That was not available in 11.0. It was not even available in 10.2.2. So if you select an entire list, then from the more button for the toolbar, you will have an option convert list to repeated table. We did have an option of converting a list to a cross tab, which was pivot list to a cross tab. We had an icon for that also. That option was available since version eight. But this is a new capability added, convert list to repeated table. So once you convert it to a repeater table, you can then manage the repeater table to add more columns or more rows to it to make sure that you are able to quickly create a repeater table. But of course, when you go through the convert list to a repeater table, every column will have its own heading also, which again, you may or may not want. So you can start with a new repeater table yourself, or if a list is already there, you can convert and then tweak the repeater table to your requirements. There is another new capability that is something which is a guided report layout that is switched on by default. And sometimes people working from 11.0 to 11.1, .1, that comes almost like a shock. And the reason why that was added was to make the environment more user-friendly for business authors. Now in 11.0, what was there was you could add objects to the left of an object or to the right of the object and certain objects like blocks or tables if you add them to the left they will automatically go to the top if you add them to the right they will go to the bottom and initially that was also confusing to people say well i'm adding it to the left why is it going to the top when i'm adding to the right why is it going to the bottom technical people were comfortable with that but the business users who were trying to create reports were getting baffled by this so by using guided report layout, which is switched on by default, you can add objects to left, right, top, or bottom. So in the screenshot here, I've added a block to the left of a list, to the right of a list, bottom of a list, and top of a list. So you can add the objects where you want. So that is the advantage of guided report layout. 
but it can sometimes become confusing because as you are dragging and dropping objects it starts dynamically changing your screen and i don't know how many of you have found it confusing but i have gotten a feedback in the class saying why i am not able to place the object exactly where i want but that feedback mostly has come from technical people who are used to adding objects in 11.0 or in 10.2.2 so thankfully that's a setting in the options of reporting application and you can switch that off so if you switch that off then you can emulate the 11.0 or 10.2.2 behavior so that is uh, i would reserve my q and a uh, a little bit later i would like to show you before that two videos which i have done what i have done is to give you a look and feel of the environments i have recorded two videos one on 11.0 and one on 11.1 and i have taken an activity from the class so those of you who have attended the classes with us would recognize immediately that the activity is taken from the class so that is one simple activity it will be about 5 minutes video where we are just creating a report and when i create a report the creation of the report is exactly the same in version 11.0 and 11.1 but once you are in the interface you would see the differences like on the left side you see the navigation icons there are four icons are there and also the application bar on the top right hand side you see the application bar icons we add new package and of course that might be a little bit monotonous for you just adding the columns to it just getting to the report once we are on the report and this um, activity is from conditional formatting Now you notice the toolbar it is coming up as i add the uh, columns or i select a column the toolbar expands and contracts and it's floating so when i select another column you see it floats over the screen it goes to different places we don't have any control over that as we work with the objects now notice if i click on the queries and i go to the variables even when i click on variables i don't have a way to add a variable so that for that i need to click on the toolbox just creating a simple string variable need to create two values for this variable and those of you who have attended any training with us would relate whether it's 11.0 or 11.1 this is an activity in both the trainings and the properties window in 11.1 is open by default in 11.0 it is closed by default so now the toolbar has come over the objects that is also not only floating on the page it comes sometimes cover the object so that also uh results in some unnecessary clicking to just move the toolbar out of the way so now that i am in a conditional formatting mode only a box comes in 
and then disappears. After that, I've got no indication on the page that I am in the conditional formatting mode. So that it's easy to forget in 11.0 that I am working in conditional formatting mode because nothing on the screen tells me that. That has been handled in 11.1. So that's our simple conditional formatting activity. And you see the page views icon. So that is, it was in 11.0. And if you change the page view, you would not know what page you are working in. And you see the locked icon is under the more. So if you unlock the report, you would not know whether the report is working in locked mode or unlocked mode. And you right click the query, you see the view tabular data is under the right click menu for the query. So that was the activity for version 11.0. Now let's do the same thing in 11.1. And it'll be exactly the same thing and we'll be able to notice the differences between 11.0 and See the icon, navigation icons, there's only one, insertable objects. Those four are missing. And in the top right hand corner also, you see that I don't have page views icon and under the more button, there are not that many options. So there is the new icon for global options. And also under report, you see there is enable guided report layout. I will talk about that in the video a little bit later also. Now notice the toolbar, it is there at the top of the screen, it is pinned right now, and the icons will only change based on the object which is currently selected. There is a navigation menu, which is always there at the top of the page, and you click on there, you will be able to navigate through the objects of the report. 
So if I go to variables, you see that the toolbar box is automatically selected. I don't need to click on the toolbox icon to know what objects can be added to the variables pane. They may add the values for the variable that nothing has changed there. Now this difference, once we are doing the conditional formatting, there is a new icon for conditional state. So there when you select a value, the color of that icon would change from gray to blue. So once I select a value, the icon changes to blue. So I keep knowing that I am in the conditional formatting mode. Until I clear the conditional state, the icon would stay blue. When you say clear conditional state, the icon will go gray and I move out of the conditional formatting. That results are the same. The So the working wise, there is no difference. The result is exactly the same as 11.0. You see the page design, that's a drop down now. And also you notice the icon for lock on the left of page design. And in the mode, there are no properties there. The properties have been moved and the pinning of the toolbar. So if I click on that pin, unpin icon, and once I unpin, the toolbar starts floating. And if I pin it, it goes back and you notice the icons coming into the toolbar. That is a new option, convert list to repeater table. Once I can click on that, list is converted to a repeater table and I can change the rows and columns of the repeater table. Well, that was 11.1 activity. Hopefully the differences were clear in the two. And before I uh, go to the Q&A session, there is one last poll which I want to open up, which I'm just going to do right now.
Okay. Good thing it has gone exactly 50-50. That's really great. So I would then open to question and answer. If there are any questions, you can uh, put that question in the uh, Q&A window. Uh, Vinay, it does look like we do have some questions in there. So yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, some of the questions uh, will be addressed by you also, Jimmy. So the first one is, what about cross tabs in this new version? The cross tabs are, uh, I mean, there's no change in the cross tab behavior in this new version. So um, I would say that. There's no change in the cross tab behavior here. And next question is, will the toolbar get pinned by default? Yes, when you start on a new report, the toolbars which are coming, they are pinned by default. You can unpin them if you want. And when you unpin them, they would start floating. The print option for the report. Now, print option it depends upon if you have configured printers in your environment, then only you will be able to see the print option. If the, uh, uh, normally what is done is, and that's what I've seen as a consultant and various places, if you want to print a report, you will not print an HTML report. You will print it in Excel or in PDF. So once you run the report in Excel or PDF, you can save it on your own machine and can use your operating system printer to print the report. Well, that question is again the same. The toolbar is pinned by default. Exploration feature, that's a new feature which is there. Uh, that's not yet in the training. The exploration feature is uh, more statistical in nature, where you want to explore your data and uh, find out how your data items relate to each other. What data items have effect on what measure items that you have. That is more statistical and prediction in nature. So that is what the exploration feature is. So you create a new exploration, and you uh, just like uh, Analysis Studio used to let you do analysis to get insights to your data, exploration does the same thing, but it also tries to let you predict and also can let you give uh, English level questions saying, well, how does this measure affect this another measure? So Cognos, uh, and that is an integration of Watson into IBM Analytics. Hopefully, we'll find that in the future trainings. Okay, one of the questions, Jimmy, was uh, where, where can they find the link to this video presentation? So uh, that is, I believe, is more for you to answer. Uh, yes, I did answer that in the Q&A. Uh, just to give everyone a heads up on that one, we will be sending out a, a communication, all the registrations uh, with a link for the video recording for today's presentation. Okay, there are, there are more uh, questions coming in. So one is to select the language to run the report without changes to your profile settings. Now, uh, run the report in a language is more uh, involved than just changing the language. Your package has to handle the multilingual data. So once that is done, then yes, you can run a report in uh, language. Of course, the profile settings based on if your if your administrators restrict you from changing a language, of course, then you will not be able to. By default, yes, you can run a report in any language. And be mindful that in 11.1 and 11.0, the, uh, the administrator capability has gone way too granular. They can even control what menu items you can see what uh, options you can see. So all that can be controlled. So if your administrator controls your ability 
to change the language, then you will not be, by default you can. So uh, changes to the dashboard. So there would be some changes uh, to the dashboards that you will be able to get that changes and stories and dashboards are new features coming in 11.0. They are doing certain changes, but specific changes I would not address here. If you want, there is a um, half day self-paced training available for the dashboards, uh, but that is available for 11.0 only. I didn't see a training for dashboard for 11.1, .1, but I can double check for you. Any other question, please? Okay. Oh, there also, I mean, uh, Albert, to your question, uh, you, uh, you go to run options, there you can change the uh, language in which you want to run the report. Yes, it is very similar to version 10.2. When you click on the run button and the drop down, there is a last option, show run options. When you go there, you will see a language is drop down, you can change the language there. So you can do that, but that would only give you results if your package is multilingual. Does IBM have any documents showing changes? If that was, I would just, uh, well, they, I won't say that there is no, the changes, if you go to IBM site, you will find any particular version, there is always a list of the changes in that version. But they don't have a one consolidated document which says that these are the changes. So there is no one place to go, otherwise this webinar would be moot. Any changes in the way JavaScript is implemented? Uh, well, uh, there are changes from 11.0 to 11.1. .1. In 11.0, there was an option available uh, run with full interactivity, and that was interfering the way JavaScript was run. So behind the scenes, those changes have been implemented, but not very well documented. The way JavaScript is implemented, you can still write JavaScript, you can still add HTML to do it, but the way it is implemented, that is, uh, I mean, if you refer to the manual for SDK, you will find the answer there if there are any changes in the way JavaScript is implemented. But writing JavaScript through HTML is the same. Well, Brandon, I do see your question. It says, I can't seem to submit any questions here. Can you see this? Yes, I can see this. Easiest question to answer. Okay, we are almost at the top of the hour. Five more minutes left and there are no more questions. Hopefully everybody uh, gained to some extent from this webinar and um, I would pass on the mantle back to Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Vinay. Uh, as you said, we are at the end of the pre presentation. So thank you everyone for attending. Uh, and I see we have one more question which popped in there for you, Vinay. Yeah, it says we are currently using 11.0.7 .7 and dashboard don't seem to allow joins and manipulation of multiple tables. Do any subsequent release allow this in the dashboards? Well, uh, right now live, I won't be able to answer this. I would keep this question with me. And uh, if uh, the question is from Brandon Green, uh, Jimmy, I don't know whether you have the email address or if you can tell him to email us, then we can try to find the answer to this and get back to him. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so thank you everyone for attending. Uh, please know that today's presentation, or the recording of today's presentation will be sent to all registrants uh, by the end of the week. Uh, the winner of the free IBM SVVC course will be contacted directly tomorrow, along with any information, uh, with an information page which will include all of the uh, quick links and additional content for it. So uh, again, thank you everyone for attending and hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.